Thank you, sir. Representative Fry of the 111th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I have to say there's been a few very difficult acts to uh, follow here this evening. I'm going to make this very short. Um, I wasn't going to say anything tonight. And, of course, that's one of the oldest sayings that we hear up here. And uh, it dawned on me last night, I read a news account, uh, a story in the New Haven Register that made me think that maybe I should say a couple of words. Um, and I'll be very brief, so if you would indulge me. <clears throat> My story starts the week before, December 14th. And I've got uh, two nieces, uh, twins, who are in fourth grade at Sandy Hook and a, f and a uh, first grade nephew. Uh, Sandy Hook is K through four. And my sister t sent me a text the week before and said, look, the girls are singing in their holiday concert on December 13th. They'd love to have see Uncle Johnny there. And I didn't respond. It's one of those things where I would have liked to have gone ordinarily, but something would else, somebody would come up and I'd miss it. And while Newtown is only 12 or 15 miles away, I didn't want to disappoint. Well, the day of the 13th, that Thursday afternoon, I finished up my business early and decided I'm going to go up and surprise them and, and go see the concert. So uh, all the fourth graders in Sandy Hook School participate in the, the holiday concert. And I have to say they were quite good, much better than when I was in fourth grade and was in the <laughs> band or concerts. They, they were excellent. They have so many people come that they have it at the, at the Newtown High School. So it wasn't in the Sandy Hook Elementary School, although I've been there before. I snuck in and I tweeted that I was at the concert because I know my brother-in-law follows my tweets. And a few minutes later, they looked around and found me. And my first grade nephew came running up and joined me and sitting down. Standing next to me was the principal and the vice principal of Sandy Hook Elementary School, beaming with pride at, at the, the, how the kids were performing. And it was such a pleasant evening. As you can imagine, as every other elementary school concert, parents were videotaping their kids. The younger siblings were running up and down the aisle. And that scene haunted me for quite a while afterwards. The next morning, uh, so that night, my brother-in-law took my nephew home. And my sister with her fourth grade twins went out to get yogurt with another family. The next morning, at a quarter to 10, I get a text from my sister. Something's going on at the Sandy Hook Elementary School. Can you nose around and let me know what's going on? So I go, I went to the News Times website, and there, there's a kind of a bulletin that said, um, reported gunmen at Sandy Hook Elementary School. That's about all I said at that point. So I sent that text to my sister, that link to that story. I didn't realize later on and this is why I mentioned, that's why I decided to stand up tonight. Last night in the New Haven Register, one of the parents who came up here on Monday stated that uh, 11 kids survived Sandy Hook, that they escaped the school. I knew that. Uh, six kids escaped and went to a, a neighbor's house, I can't remember the gentleman's name, um, and, and ran out of the school. Five kids were running up the street when my sister was driving down Riverside Drive, Riverside Avenue, Riverside Drive. She picked them up. And she pulled over and she saw these five first graders tearing ass up the street, way past the firehouse, and heading north. And she pulled over. She knew two of the kids and said, where, where are you guys going? You're supposed to be in school. Oh, there's a guy trying to kill us. He's got a gun. So she loaded the kids in, this, in the car, her van, and called the school, and there was no answer. And she called the police department, and they said, bring the kids right here. These kids had witnessed their teacher shot um, straight ahead, and then uh, Adam Lanz, I'm not going to refer to his name again, but stood over her and shot her four more times. And they saw several of their classmates shot as well. So my sister took these kids to the police department, and as she's driving down Riverside, past the school entrance, a lot of emergency vehicles are flying by. Newtown police, state police, you can ambulances, you can imagine. And she goes to the Newtown police department. They pretty much emptied out. There was a secretary and a dispatcher and probably not many other people there as they were all had left. So I put my sister in a room with these five kids and said, take their names down. If you can call their parents, that's great. 
And the secretary came in a little while later, and my sister was singing to these kids. And the, the woman, I think it's a woman, said, I can't believe what you're doing. She says, well, these kids need to be comforted. They need to be nurtured. For the first half hour, she didn't know the fate of her own kids until somebody sent her a text that they were seen and they were okay. They were lined up in the Sandy Hook Volunteer Fire Department, and they were okay. So um, it didn't dawn to me until much later that night what a hero my sister was. And she says, well, you know, you would have done the same thing. I don't know. Maybe I would have stopped and picked up those five kids. But I can't imagine sitting with them in a room, trying to comfort them, hearing their stories and how frightened they were of having seen their teacher murdered in front of them and not knowing the fate of her own kids. But she did it. So finally she got hold of one parent, and uh, that parent came down actually along with their parents, and she said, look, would you mind staying here? I need to go comfort my own kids at this point, and they did. So I have to, I've, I've tried to separate emotion from fact, and I think I do a pretty good job of that. And this is coming from a guy who, um, I think I've been endorsed by the NRA every time I've run for office. Um, I certainly believe in the Second Amendment rights. I've spoken to first responders who were there, uh, police chiefs, state troopers, parents, NRA members. I had lunch with the former NRA president in January. I really tried to do my homework on the subject. I had two training sessions on weapons. I'm not a real gun guy. And uh, my chief of police and our training officer in Ridgefield, who went to the scene uh, two, three days later and said, look, uh, I'm a dad first and a cop second. And the collateral damage done uh, was uh, beyond words. Um, what the article pointed out to me last night when I read it, and they said that, you know, one of the parents said that reports haven't really been clear, but 11 kids made it out of the classroom. I think it was the third classroom that uh, he went into. Uh, we all know, based on the police report, or parts of the police report that were released recently, that his goal was to have as much collateral damage as possible. And somehow, some way, God was on the side of these 11 first graders who in two groups escaped. And I've heard two things that uh, his magazine clip was empty. I've heard another one that it was uh, jammed. I guess at some point we'll know the truth. But, it, and I've also heard that he was a very good shot. So I, I'm sure it, it was of some disappointment to him, unfortunately for him, that these 11 first graders escaped. Um, I've spoken to, like we all have, people on both sides. This isn't a perfect bill. Uh, I wish it wasn't going through ECERT. I wish we had gone to a public hearing. I think some of the comments made tonight, we could have perhaps made this bill better. Um, but there's enough in it. You know, the, the people who are concerned about their Second Amendment rights, I think, are still thinking that there could be a tax on ammunition or a restriction to purchase one gun a month or a confiscation of magazines October 1st or special insurance for gun owners or other things that are not included in this bill. I agree with Representative Kupchik. She was extremely emotional, but I think she's correct. I think more focus needs to be put on mental health. Um, but after sleepless nights and honestly thinking about my nieces and nephew, I'd give my right arm for these kids. Uh, Bennett, I think there's five first grade classrooms at Sandy Hook. The first classroom, the teacher put the kids in the bathroom and barricaded the door. And uh, he looked in that classroom, didn't see anybody, and left and went to the next classroom and uh, proceeded to uh, do his thing in the next two classrooms. I think Bennett would have been not in the fourth classroom, but I think in the fifth. Uh, his classes, classmates, they were all standing in their little cubbies behind their coats. Easy targets. My fourth grade nieces, one was in the library, one was in the gym. Uh, the one in the gym uh, had a crawl. They waited to, they waited to the, they, the teachers did an amazing job. But they waited till the police came, 
they had to crawl across the uh, gym like I think Navy SEALs would train and escape, and they were told not to look in a certain direction, and they saw broken glass, they saw guys with machine guns, but they didn't see anything too worse than that. One of my, uh, as I mentioned before, the night of the concert, my sister went out with a, another friend of hers, and kids were in the fourth grade course. Uh, that friend, uh, friend of uh, that fourth grader, uh, friend of the family, lost her brother on, on the 14th. Joni, my niece, insisted on going to the wake. Now, she had been to a wake before. Her grandmother passed away a couple years ago, and my sister said, okay, you know, you know what these are all about. You know what wakes are like. This might be different, but she said, yes, I do. I want to go for my friend. So they go with a white casket, open, little bicycle, little trophy. My uh, niece's friend comes running in. They go running to each other. My sister decides, okay, I guess we're going to be here for a while. Joni's comforting her friend. A little while later, my sister looks up. And there's Joni, my niece, and her friend kneeling at the casket. So later on, um, my sister asked her, so what happened there? How did that all occur? And she said, well, her friend, I'm not going to say her friend's name, but her friend said, do you want to go see my brother? She said, sure. She goes, well, I don't have to wait in the line. I'm family. We can cut. Okay. So they cut in line. And as... I guess is comforting to one fourth grader to another. Joni says, geez, his nose looks bruised. And she says, yeah, we heard that he fell down. But she stayed with her friend the entire time and has been in comfort uh, to her, I think, in a great way uh, since then. There's been interesting things. Joni, the one I'm talking about, went to the Super Bowl and sang. I don't know if many of you saw that. Um, but there are peaks and valleys. Yeah, these kids are still going through therapy. The, the therapy dogs have been great. Um, they do art therapy. They're trying to keep them busy. In the beginning, they had difficulty going to sleep. Um, that's gotten better. As I say, our family is lucky. Um, but who knows what the future will bring. So as the representative from Newtown mentioned that these 26 people who lost their lives, there are 11 students who saw the unmentionable happen in front of them. Ten in one class, and I think ten in one class, and one another, do I have that correct? Eleven or twelve, uh, saw the unspeakable. So I think while this bill could be better, it could have been a whole lot worse. So I thank the leaders for putting this together, and I think having everyone's uh, um, input in it, it was particularly wise and helpful. And uh, uh, I'm not going to encourage people to adopt. You have to do what's in your heart. Um, but as I say, I've wrestled with this for some time and have lived through it. I lived through Christmas when my nieces and nephew were rather quiet. It was a day that, at Christmas I do at my house. And part of me, I, I wish the whole thing was over. And on the other hand, I want to make it especially special for these three kids. So I'm not going to urge you to vote yes or vote no. But vote what you think is right. Thank you.